And uh, thanks for joining us. It's been another day of uh, questioning at uh, the Parliamentary Ad Hoc Committee uh, probe into an alleged plot to remove the Inspector General of Police, Dr. George Kufo Dampari. Today, though, uh, that inquest uh, was behind closed doors as the National Security Minister and the IGP, uh, as well as four other witnesses, uh, made appearances before the Atatia Committee. Uh, first, though, a recap of what transpired yesterday when the Inspector General of Police appeared before this ad hoc committee. The point I'm trying to make is the fact that we are all human beings and at times these things happen. You may have all what it takes to handle all the situation, but when you are speaking to a matter and the feeling of how you feel comes on board, it's normal. And the most important thing is that I understand all the issues you are raising. And I'm in sync with it because I'm a true Christian. Now, you have a working relationship with Chief Bugri Nabu. Honorable Chair, I do not have a working relationship with him. Probably my brother wanted to say I'm the best and he missed it. <laughs> <laughs> because the records are there for everybody to see. The beauty of mankind is that everybody has an opinion and he can express it in any form or shape. But that has not changed the facts. And this is the point, Honorable Chair. Since my colleagues and I, and the rest of the commands across the country, had opportunity by the grace of God and with the honor done me by His Excellency the President Nana Adudanko Ekufuado, we committed ourselves to transforming the organization to become the best in the country and a reference point for Africa and beyond in a teamwork fashion based on Genesis 1. 26. So we've been granted that I'm the worst. Then all of us collectively are the worst. Including probably my brother who was serving in that capacity as member of the team that I led. I lead, I lead. So I think it was a slip of tongue on his part. And I would tell you the most important thing is this. Election involves so many stakeholders and each one has its role. And the police also has its role. An election is a simple matter where each stakeholder play its role and collectively we end up ensuring that it is over and the people then decide who becomes the leaders. So nobody has some supremacy in terms of when it comes to his or an entity or an institution when it comes to its role in ensuring that election are successfully. As far as I'm concerned, all the stakeholders have to play their role. And the point is that because each role is unique, you cannot even compare to see who one, which one is on top and which one is not. So as far as I'm concerned, all the stakeholders have critical roles to play in ensuring that elections are successful. Honorable Chair, at the time that they were making it, without a shred of evidence. And Honorable Chair, those wide delegations without a shred of evidence has brought a lot of pain to myself, my family across the country, and especially my wife and children. That you are so patriotic because you believe in what you call pan-Ghanianism, where you think that because of your multi-ethnic nature, everybody you see, as long as the person is a Ghanian, is your brother or a sister, mother or father, uncle or auntie. Then the pain also to my command, my leaders, my team, that we work together that we all know, and the pain to the thousands of police people who are appreciating the strides that we are making in transforming the organization to 
be the best institution in the country and a reference point for the rest of the world. Thank you. Made all these allegations in order to cover up probably the shame and sweater what they got themselves involved in in the first place. And I, an innocent person, focusing on my job, working in concert with my team and all commands across the country to keep the country safe and make it to be at peace for itself. I've been asked to come and answer to these allegations. Uh, as of activities uh, which transpired in the last uh, 24 hours. But now there's an update. Uh, let's uh, cross over now to uh, Parliament House, where, of course, uh, these proceedings are uh, pro uh, proceeding for today. Interesting way of putting it. But uh, Samuel Mbura, my colleague, is uh, there for us monitoring all of the developments. I mean, just bring us up to speed with, uh, you know, some of uh, the bits and pieces of what we're hearing uh, as fallouts from today's uh, meeting, knowing that this is happening in camera. Well, blessed. So the in camera hearing has ended for today. Um, the National Security Minister, Albert Kandapa, was the one who appeared before the committee. He came without our notice and left without our notice. But he spent about one hour before the committee testifying. The reason he appeared before the committee is the fact that his ministry, according to the committee, had already launched investigations into the leak tape and some of the witnesses were already invited uh, for scrutiny. So uh, his presence was to help them unravel some of the, the truths in the allegations for them to have a flawless uh, report. So after the engagement with the committee, in which the committee chairman said it had been fruitful, he presented a paper. So the committee was expecting that he would tender that in as evidence, but he said because of national security consequence, he may not be able to tender that in. So um, they were done with him and he left. So four of the uh, witnesses appeared before the committee. We had Superintendent uh, George Sari, we had COP Alex Mensa, we also had uh, Eric um, COP, I mean, Chief uh, Superintendent uh, Eric Emmanuel Jebi, and the chief witness, Daniel Bugrenabu. Unfortunately, they were not scrutinized on their evidence um, before the committee. Uh, we're told that um, they have agreed that on the 2nd of October, the sitting will resume. So IGP Dr. Akufudan Pari was not able to be part of this particular meeting or this um, session because we're told he had an equally important National Security Council meeting that he couldn't have abandoned to come for the committee's meeting. So um, he wasn't here for the hearing, but he was re represented by his lawyers um, uh, that were led by uh, lawyer Kwame Jan. Uh, after the, in, I mean, the, the engagement with the committee, uh, I spoke to lawyer Kwame Jan. He wouldn't talk to me the details about it. He only told me that uh, no further comments. However, they are ready to come on the 2nd of October for it. Same as the lawyer for Superintendent George Sari, uh, Mr. Alfred uh, Papa Dakwa, that they are satisfied with the processes so far. Uh, uh, fortunately, on my part, I was able to catch up with COP Alex Mensa, the main man at the center of this leak tape. Uh, we know he'll be going for, uh, going for retirement uh, by the close of this week, because we're told around 16, between 16 to 17, he should be going on retirement. So uh, by the close of this week, he should be going on retirement. But he told me that he is not perturbed at all. He has a solid case, and Ghanaians will know the truth on the 2nd of October or when they start scrutinizing the allegations or the evidence that he's going to put uh, before them. So um, all parties have spoken to us, but they wouldn't want to go into the substantive issues about the allegations and all that. So after this meeting, um, the chairman of the committee, Samuel Atashia, came to address the media and then he spoke about the fact that I actually asked that specific question as to where this second tape is coming from. You know, the reason they had to adjourn some of his seating was the fact that they had a second tape coming in and they had to scrutinize it. So I asked that question uh, to find out the source of the second tape. He confirmed to me that the second tape is coming from Chief Bugri Nabu, 
the star witness in this case. So this second tape uh, captures the conversation that Chief Bugri Nabu had with um, his, the accusers of the IGP at his office in Osu. Uh, so they have furnished all the uh, parties involved with the necessary proceedings and transcri uh, transcriptions of this and they expect that the next sitting there will not be objections about the tape and all that. So uh, yes, it has now been revealed, uh, contrary to earlier um, I mean, resistance by the committee to tell us the, second, the source of the second tape. You know there is also this video uh, that has or purportedly uh, has a voice of Buri Nabu alleging that he has been paid 10,000 Ghana cities from the office of the IGP and also some contracts have been awarded to him by the IGP. We know the IGP has denied all these claims flatly but the committee chairman said if need be they are going to scrutinize any material that is available or relevant uh, to this um, a, a leaked tape thing. So uh, it is going to take a wider uh, coverage and going forward they're going to have a five consecutive times sitting on this case and all these sittings will be in camera. So at the moment we've closed proceedings for today and we are expected to resume uh, monitoring of these proceedings on the 2nd of October 2023. Bless it. Okay, uh, quite a long break for, for the committee itself, but someone who are joining us live from uh, Parliament. I, I want us now to listen to COP uh, Alex Mensa, who's been reacting to some of the concerns and fallouts from today's meeting. You are done with the scrutiny today? I'm sorry. You are done today? Yeah, we're done. You are done? Yes. The IGP didn't come? Yes, he did. The National Security Minister did, uh, appeared before the committee? Yes, I've told you that I want to speak for me. Have you have you presented your evidence? No. Why? They didn't give you the opportunity. Not started yet. They've not even started. No. So who did they deal with? I've told you I don't want to make any comment. But you're a strong man. Why wouldn't and you I want to talk? You're a strong man. You're a strong man. You are, you are strong man. We know that you are. Yes, you, I will not make. You are a blunt issue. type. So whatever you see, I you say. I that I will not make comment on this issue. So we will this. take it that today was the preliminary of uh, the. I don't know. Of, uh, I don't know. You can get these answers from the parliamentary select committee. But are you happy? Are you happy with the process so far? Very, very. You are happy with the process. Very. Have you? Been, do you think you have been given a fair hearing on very, this? Very, very fair. So we should be expecting. Uh, very fair. Perfect. Very fair. Very fair. We should be expecting solid evidence yes, from you. Yes. Is your evidence ready? Everything is ready. Everything is ready, including yes. what? Including what? <laughs> I'm not ready to comment on anything. Yes. I only tell you everything is ready. And that's it. I see. Oh, what is that one? The proceedings that makes you feel happy. No, no, the, the process is everything is going on well. Okay. Everything is going on well. So when are we, when are we expecting you? October. Yeah. Second of October, it should be coming before the committee. Yes. All right. Thank you. What, what's your message to Ghanaians? I don't know. I don't want to speak now. Ghanaians are willing to hear from you. The truth will come out. The truth? Yes. From COP Alex Mensa. Yes. Okay. Uh, the truth, he says, will stand. Uh, but how about the lawyers of the IGP who uh, equally appeared before the committee today? Uh, we can listen to some of them. When are you coming again? We are coming back second, third, fourth, fifth. Wow. And sixth of October. Uh, with this one, IGP will days. be coming? All the days. Five days. Okay. Five days. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Okay, so good time now to bring in Emmanuel uh, Koteng, Executive Director for the Africa Center for Security and uh, Counterterrorism. Thank you, sir, for spending some time with us. Uh, fast developing issue, but now it's on ice, isn't it? Uh, knowing that um, the committee has uh, some break period uh, up until um, next month, uh, at least, uh, to resume hearing. So within this period, what's your expectation, first of all, uh, from the committee and also from the Inspector General of Police, who has been, uh, you know, accused of uh, a number of issues, including the fact that he's not leading the police service in the direction he should be going? Well, bless and thank you for having me. Very good afternoon to your cherished listeners. In fact, I've always maintained that the future is so pregnant and there will be a lot of interesting revelation ahead. And you see the proceedings on ice now, just like you mentioned. 
I think the committee will go into conclave and redesign the way they approach this delicate issue that have very serious national security implications. I think the committee might also look at other videos that have that are coming up. And uh, I will urge them to take interest in such videos because the persons identified before the audios or the videos, some of them are before the committee, but others are not. Especially the video that seeks to purport the allegation from a voice that uh, Buru Nabu takes 10,000 cities from the police and that of the contract as i think we should be interested in that too i also want to avert the mind of the committee to one other thing we should be interested in the leak the source of the leak and you know star Abram broke this news so if you are able to identify that we can trace the trail and that will be very significant in terms of evidence before the committee. Don't forget, Don Parry is not on trial. I think the Sorry, sir, for... is as an institution is on trial. Yeah. Sorry for cutting through. I'm just asking the question. What, what will be the relevance anyway? Now the audio is in the public domain. The substance of the matter is to try and uh, verify the, I mean, the audio uh, issues of um, you know whether or not these were the exact claims that were made and to proceed with remedial measures why go back trail or perhaps track in your words uh, the source of this uh, leaked audio what would be the relevance sir? because of investigations you need all this trail to be able to make a, a, a very pronounced judgment of a recommendation that will be fair to both parties and you see the videos i'm talking of that is where Buru Nabo was caught saying that he received 10,000 from the IGP and the contract issues also emanated from that video. So that should be a source of concern and of interest to the committee because this video is in the public space and it's creating a lot of misinformation. So I think in criminal jurisprudence or for the fair play of investigative investigation, it's proper that they put all this evidence into perspective in their work. You also made mention about some of the things that the Inspector General of Police have been accused of. You see, the Ghana Police Service is a regimental institution. We must make that very clear. And in regimental institutions, it's not like other public institutions that gives a way for the kind of dissent we are getting uh, with the uh, situation before us now. And we must also get one thing very clear. In human resource management, it cannot be said that when there's change of leadership, it is not try that certain changes will be done to help the head of such an institution to deliver his mandate. But it cannot be said that such changes will provoke the kind of activists we have in the Ghana Police Service now. And look, I have spoken to run and far within the service. The allegations are so damning. And I think that it's only proper that as a country, we take stock and make use of this opportunity that is before us to engineer security reforms. Don't forget, I don't remember the last time we had security sector reforms within our security agencies, not only the police. And you know, our democracy has evolved over a period. And I think that some of the security acts needs a look at so that it can be in tandem with our democracy or our constitution. What are the issues? What are the allegations? You see, yesterday, they asked him about his idea of centralizing information within the service. And his claim that it was in line with international best practice. And I strongly disagree with that. And this afternoon, I listened to the midday news where you spoke to a BBC correspondent using Scott Kleinyard as an example. 
the journalists should equally have used the Metropolitan Constabulary because they are in charge directly with the internal security of the state mm -hmm. equivalent to our police here. Yeah. And I have not seen anywhere that uh, 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 we are looking at decentralizing our police service. That was where the concept of community policing came about, that you decentralize information. I come from Sabuba in the northern region. Why should it be the case that I, an event will happen in Sabuba? And the commander in Saboba cannot speak to the issues. It has to come to Accra. And look at the bureaucratic nature of our system. He mm. rather did the opposite. He rather decentralized intelligence. You understand? Okay. And I feel that intelligence is just the matter of collecting information. It's how you manage saying. So it is intelligence rather he should have centralized and he centralized the information flow within the service. Okay, the, the feeling said, now is the feeling now yeah, is that the, that the committee um, is probably prolonging, um, you know, rift and the tension within the service by you know further postponing this matter to October uh, two. The feeling is why not deal with this expeditiously? Have uh, you know all the matters resolved uh, in the shortest possible time, knowing that there are implications for national security. Not at all, blessing. You see, this is a very delicate issue. And if you look at the issues, I think we need all the time and patience to digest the issues properly, make sure we are fair to all, all parties within uh, uh, the, the divide. Don't forget, uh, uh, as part of the attempts of reference, they are supposed to make recommendations. And if you look at the heart of the upheavals within the service, there are issues that have to do with their welfare, promotions, and other things. And I think that it's only fair that we give the committee an output time to do this to work properly. But blessing, let's look at this thing this way. What would the outcome of this committee finding be, really? It can go beyond parliament. So to me, I think that I agree with my other colleagues who are calling for a national commission of inquiry, probably headed by high court judge or uh, an appeals court judge, so that we can diagnose the problems uh, very well. Look at yesterday. We had the IGP crying before the cameras because he felt that he has not been properly treated. But I think that it was very unfortunate for him to cry before the committee, because the committee, for lack of any better expression, had rather provided him a platform to rebut many of these allegations that has been leveled against him. And let us make one thing clear, bless him. The personality of the IGP is not on trial at all. It is the office of the IGP. And you see yesterday, when he appeared before the committee, as a requirement, all the POMA members came with him. That is why it is a regimental institution. So for him to have used the presence of the POMA members as a, 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 a fiat for his team plays, I think it was so disingenuous. It is like the president of the republic appearing before parliament on the treasonable investigative kind of thing like we have before us and the cabinet ministers will not come with him. Having said that, uh, 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 blessing, you see, why are we investigating this thing? We have to get that right because there was an allegation that a senior police uh, 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 commissioner is alleging that somebody is an NDC sympathizer, and then when he's allowed to remain in office, it will give the uh, 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 MPP the opportunity to rig the elections. Okay. Naming people and tagging people as MPP is not new within the service. And I can give you two examples. You know this UOP Garba. 
This COP Garba has remained in, the, in his rank for over five years now. He had the job to do with UN. He was refused release by this current IGP and tack him as an NDC commissioner who was going to make money and come and lobby for the IGP. So it means that all these things are not new within the system. It is as old as the system itself. And COP members should not be hanged for being bold to come out to speak about it. At least it has afforded us an opportunity to look at reforms within the service. Okay. We'll see uh, if these uh, reforms will happen. Grateful uh, for spending some time with us, uh, Emmanuel Koten.